Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to our service online. Uh, we're glad you're here. I hope you're rejoicing in the Lord. Uh, it's been a good day, amen, to praise the Lord. And uh, we want to start by singing some songs of Zion so that we can uh, worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Good to see Debbie with us again this morning. And we're going to read, we're going to start this morning by singing number 561, which is Rescue the Perishing, Care for the Dying. You'll find it on the website under Songs along the tab there and you'll be able to join in or if you have the book you can just turn to number 561 so we're going to sing this good song rescue the perishing care for the dying rescue the perishing care for the dying snatch them in pity from sin and the grave we pour the erring ones lift up the fallen Tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Though they are slighting him, still he is waiting. Waiting the penitent child to receive. Plead with them earnestly, plead with them gently. He will forgive if they only believe. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, feelings lie buried that grace can restore. Touched by a loving heart, wakened by kindness, cords that were broken will vibrate once more. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it. Strength for thy labor the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently win them. Tell the poor wanderer a Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Amen, that's the truth, isn't it? Rescue the perishing, care for the... Amen, that's a good song to start this morning. Uh, Rescue the perishing. And I hope that even during this time we can bear witness. Amen. And we're going to continue by singing number 484, which is what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. And you know, in these times in which we live, the Lord isn't locked down, and the Lord isn't restricted, and the Lord isn't restrained. And no matter where you are or what situation you're in, the Lord will come by and he can be with you anytime, amen. And he doesn't have to worry about getting arrested or challenged by the police. What are you doing out? The Lord can do anything, amen. And he's a wonderful comforter. So we're going to sing this song, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in. On the everlasting arms Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus Safe and secure from all alarms Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus Leaning on the everlasting arms what have I to 
dread what have I to fear leaning on the everlasting arms I have blessed peace with my Lord so near leaning on the everlasting arms leaning leaning safe and secure from all alarms leaning 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 on the everlasting arms leaning 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 on the everlasting arms leaning 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 on the everlasting arms amen what have i to dread what have i to fear leaning on the everlasting arms isn't it good to know that you can trust the lord even in this time you can still trust the lord and he can still uh, look after us and watch after us and provide for all our needs amen and we thank god for that and uh, we're all doing well we're all healthy and uh, things are going well and from what i hear from other people things are going well amen people are starting to get itchy uh, asking me for tracks so they can get out and give out tracks and start doing things, amen. And I'm like you, I'm ready to go, amen. Normally, uh, I like to go out and do some street preaching, some evangelism. And it's a little bit difficult right now, but it's amazing how God opens doors. I got a message from my brother last week. And uh, he says he's been listening to the messages and he's found it very interesting. So, and I found a message from a few people they've been watching, amen. So we can still get the gospel out. We can still tell people about Jesus, amen. And we can still tell them about the wonderful Savior we have. Um, I also uh, like to mention that normally we have our services, you know, in the building. And we manage to get together and have some good coffee and some good uh, food. Uh, some pishne food, amen. Some delicious food. And uh, we look forward to that day. We can do that. We can fellowship together. Amen. And also we take up an offering during that time so that we can support our missionaries and take care of the needs. And right now we're doing that through our church website at www.biblebaptistglasgow.com. And you can click on the link there and give. And I would encourage you to do so so that we can help support our missionaries and uh, we take care of them. Amen. Pray for Brother Kelly in Dublin and his ministry there and also for Grant and Sarah. I know that very soon they're going to be having a baby, amen, so they need our prayers, so pray for them. And I look forward to uh, uh, the announcement of that great day when that child is born, amen, and it's a wonderful thing. So we're going to continue it by singing another song, number 617. And if you, would like to, if you would like to tell us a song you would like to hear or you would like to sing along with, please message me and tell me either by email or by message and I will uh, do my best to, to get that together and we'll sing that amen and this song is in tenderness he sought me weary and sick with sin and on his shoulders brought me back to his fold again while angels in his presence sang until the courts of heaven rang oh the love that sought me oh the blood that bought me oh the grace that brought me to the fold wondrous grace that brought me to the fold and you know, we're only here this morning because of the grace and the mercy of God. And we'll be looking at that in our study of the Word of God, how God's grace and God's mercy is sufficient. Amen. Is sufficient. And thank God He's still here. Amen. Still meeting those needs. Number 617, In tenderness He sought me. In tenderness He sought me, weary and sick with sin. And on His shoulders brought me back to His fold again. While angels in his presence sang until the courts of heaven rang. Oh, the love that sought me, oh, the blood that bought me, oh, the grace that brought me to the fold. Wondrous grace that brought me to the fold. He washed the bleeding sin wounds and poured in oil and wine. He whispered to assure me, I found thee, thou art mine. I never had a sweeter voice, it made my aching heart rejoice. Oh, the love that sought me, oh, the blood that bought me, oh, the grace that brought me to the fold. Wondrous grace that brought me to the fold. He pointed to the nail prints, for me his blood was shed. A mocking crown so thorny was placed upon his head. I wonder what he saw in me to suffer such sweet agony. Oh, the 
love that sought me, oh, the blood that bought me, oh, the grace that brought me to the fold. Wondrous grace that brought me to the fold. I'm sitting in His presence, the sunshine of His face, while with adoring wonder His blessings I retrace. It seems as if eternal days are too sharp to sound His praise. Oh, the love that sought me, oh, the blood that bought me, oh, the grace that brought me to His fold. Wondrous grace that brought me to the fold. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. The good shepherd finds a lost sheep and carries him home on his shoulders. And thank God for that. Okay, we're going to try a special song for you today. It's called People Need the Lord. And I hope the Lord will bless it to your hearts. Amen. Every day they pass me by. I can see it in their eyes Empty people filled with care Headed who knows where On they go through private pain Living fear to fear Laughter hides their silent cries Only Jesus hears People need the Lord People need the Lord At the end of broken dreams Scotland needs the Lord. And that was a good song and very true. People need the Lord. That's the most important thing. People need the Lord. And that's something we have to take the words of life to people so they can find God's grace. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, I'd like you to turn to the book of Hebrews. We're going to be looking, as I said, at the book of Hebrews. And uh, I started last week a series on faith and living by faith. 
And we're going to continue that this week by looking at some characters in the book of Hebrews. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to read a few verses from there. And uh, I pray the Lord will use that to edify us, encourage us, and, and to feed us, amen, spiritually. So Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to read from verse number 1 through verse number 7. If you have your Bibles, I would encourage you to open them up and read along with me so you can see, amen, the Word of God. And Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by the elders obtained a good report, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them which diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not as yet not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Amen. Last week we looked at faith, amen, and how that we live by faith. We're saved by faith, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not yourselves. We're not saved by the things that we can do. We're not saved by religion. We're not saved by any act that we can do, such as baptism or giving or, or anything like that. We're saved by putting our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone for salvation. Salvation. The Bible says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So this week we're going to look at some aspects of faith in the lives of some Old Testament saints, amen. And faith was very much a part of the Old Testament saints. And you know, the Old Testament saints are different to us today in this, this age of grace, this dispensation of grace. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So that verse tells us we have to study. That means effort, amen. Then we have to be approved by God. We've got to get it right according to the work of God. We've got to work, amen, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you have to divide the word of truth. You have to understand how it divides through different dispensations. And if you don't, it will cause some problems, amen. For instance, uh, uh, did you know that in this dispensation in which we live, the dispensation of grace, the dispensation of the church. We have the indwelling Holy Spirit. We have Jesus in our hearts. But in the Old Testament, that wasn't the case. The, the Holy Spirit did not indwell the believer in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit came upon believers, but he did not dwell in them as we have today. And that's a very important thing to understand. They were still saved by faith, amen. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness, but they didn't have the indwelling Holy Spirit as we do. Jesus said to the disciples when teaching about the Holy Spirit in John chapter 14 and 16, it says that he shall be with you and he shall be in you. And in the book of uh, Acts, we find that the Holy Spirit came down and indwelt the church. And that's what happens during this time in this age. And there's coming a time, we call it the rapture, when the Lord is going to return for his church. And by his church, I mean all those who are saved. And he's going to take them out of this world. And the Holy Spirit is going to be taken out of this world as we are taken out of this world. And he, the, the, the man of sin will be revealed. But we'll be talking about that more in later times. So we're going to look at, first of all, we're going to look at Abel. Amen. If you turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 4, Genesis chapter 4, and we're going to read verses number 1 through verse number 7. And if you have your Bible, I encourage you to follow along. Amen. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, which says this, And Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. 
But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So as we read in Hebrews, we find the first person we're going to look at, as far as faith is concerned, is of course Abel. By faith, Abel, amen, and that's important to understand. We find that in the book of Hebrews, as I said, Hebrews chapter 11, by faith, Abel, uh, he offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. So I'm going to look at this Cain and Abel, and why did, why did God accept Abel's sacrifice and not Cain's sacrifice? Was, was God not being fair? Was the fact that Cain offered to the ground something that caused him not to be accepted? What was it about the sacrifices that God did not accept? And the first thing we have to understand about these things is that they both offered something, amen. They, they both came to the Lord and they offered something. And the first thing I want to point about Abel is that he worshipped God, God's way. Cain came, and said, came, came along and said, I know what you've said, God, but I'm going to do it my way. And he decided he was going to offer what he thought best, the way he thought, rather than what God thought. Amen. So when Abel brought a sacrifice to the Lord, it wasn't just something that he made up. It was something he saw when Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden and they knew about their sin. God had to kill an animal to clothe them. Blood was shed to cover their sin. And we find in Genesis chapter 3 verse 21, it says this, And unto Adam and also his wife did the Lord God make a coat of, sins, of skins and clothed them. So right there in Genesis chapter 3, we find that God covered sin by the shedding of an innocent animal and the shedding of blood. So when Abel brought that animal again and sacrificed it, he was doing what God showed him was the right way, the only way, and he was doing what God wants. He was saying that he believed what God had said. Not only that, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, it says this. He says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. What Abel was saying is saying, God, I believe you. I accept your way. And God saw that faith. And God said to Abel that his offering was more excellent than Cain's. But what about Cain's? What about his offering? Well, the, 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 the Bible basically says Cain brought the, of the ground that God had cursed. You see, when Abel brought that, that sacrifice, he did it because he loved God. He did it because he was honoring what God said in God's word. He did it because he believed that God was one day going to send a savior, Genesis 3.15. That the, the savior was going to come through the, uh, uh, the line of the woman and one day it would, he would die for the, the sins of you and I. And he was putting his faith and trust on that. He was putting his trust in the promise that God had given him. So God accepted Abel because he put his faith in the shed blood offering. And that's very important. But what about Cain? In uh, Genesis chapter 3, it says he brought of the fruit of the ground. In that offering, there's no evidence of faith. He knew about the shed blood. He knew about the offering. I'm sure his parents had told him. But he said, no, I don't care if God has cursed the ground. I'm going to do it my way. And let me tell you, there's still the, the, the religion of Cain in the world today. The religion that says, I don't care what the Bible says. I don't care what God wants. I'm going to offer him what I want. And what I want will be acceptable because I say so. Cain was saying, I know what you've said, God, but here's what I want to give you. Take it or leave it. And man, there's a lot of people like that today, man. Uh, I, I want to do it my way. I want to follow God my way. I don't care what the Bible says. Uh, I, I don't care about this, that, and the other. I want to, 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 to be saved on my terms. You can't be saved on your terms. You have to come simply in belief and childlike trust, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, believing in his death, burial, and resurrection. And that alone will bring you eternal life. Amen. Cain brought an offering. It was really an act of false worship. 
He was offering what he thought best rather than submitting his will to God's will. And there's many people today, they're doing it their way. Well, my religion says this, and my religion says that. My church says this. My, my priest, pastor, or pope says this. None of that matters, amen. What does God say? And God said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So God said to Cain, if you offer the right offering, will you not be accepted? It wasn't that the door to Cain was closed. Cain could have made the choice to offer the right offering, to honor God and to, to follow him, to put his faith and trust in God. But you know what Cain did? He got so angry because what he was told hurt his pride. So he went out and killed his brother Abel rather than submit himself to the will of God. And sad to say, you know, when, when I tell people that your religion is not good enough to get to heaven, they get very angry. They get mad. And some of them I've seen looks on their face if they could have killed me, they would. When you go out street preaching and give out tracts, the anger, they look at you. That's, that's the religion of Cain, amen. Instead of submitting themselves to God and what God wants, they say, this is my religion, God. Take it or leave it. And if that's your attitude, you'll never get saved, amen. The door of salvation is open to everyone. Cain could have offered the right offering and you can be saved today. You can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today, right now. But you have to do it his way, not your way. But not only do we look at Abel and we see what he did, and it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh, amen. But then there was another one, Enoch. Look at verse number, uh, number 5. It says, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. What was it about Enoch that pleased God? I believe it was his faith. Amen. When you study the Bible about Enoch, it doesn't really say an awful lot about him. It does tell us that when he was 65 years old, he had a child and that child was called Methuselah. And Methuselah means when he dies, it shall come. And when Enoch had his child, Methuselah, at 65 years, age, at 65 years old, Enoch began walking with God. And he walked with God. And that's a testimony, man. He walked with God. And the Bible said God took him before the wrath came. You know, Enoch is a type of the church and, and, and the rapture and us being taken out before judgment. And uh, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, we find a promise of God that he promised he would deliver his faithful bride from the wrath that is to come, which is the tribulation. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, it says this, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast, that hold fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So God said to the church of Philadelphia, before the wrath comes, I'm going to come and get you, and I'm going to deliver you from the wrath to come. That's what God, God said to the, uh, the Thessalonian Christians. In, in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1 and chapter 4 and, and chapter 5, we are not appointed unto wrath, and that's the wrath to come. That's not just the normal wrath, that's the wrath to come. We are waiting not to, we're not waiting to look for the Antichrist. Nowhere in the Bible, nowhere does it tell us as believers, watch out for the Antichrist. It says we are to wait for his son from heaven. We are to look for him coming, our blessed hope. Nowhere are we told to look for the Antichrist. We're told to wait for that blessed hope, amen. And that's what happened to Enoch. He started walking with God. And for 300 years, think about that for a second. 300 years he walked with God. You know, sometimes our life, and it, it, during this time of, of uh, we're kind of restricted in what we can do and where we can go and who we can see. And we think, you know, it's a long time. It's been, a, a, what, seven or eight weeks right now. It's a long time. But, you know, Enoch walked with God for 300 years. Amen. And I don't know how much time we have before the Lord comes back. I believe he's coming back very soon. Amen. Uh, the signs of the times are everywhere. Amen. I'm not looking for the signs. I'm listening for the trumpet. Amen. 
that, that last trump, the, 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 the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the, in the air to meet the Lord, with them in the, uh, in the air to meet the Lord, amen. And I'm looking forward to that. But Enoch, when he was walking with God, the Lord came and took him. And when the Lord came and took him, it was sudden, amen. That's why the Bible says when the rapture happens, it's going to happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in a moment. It's going to be sudden. It's going to be selective. When God took Enoch, he didn't take a whole bunch of people. He took Enoch. And when God comes back in the clouds, amen, in the rapture, he's not coming back to rule and reign at that time. That happens at the end of the tribulation, amen, when he will return. And every, every eye shall see him and every eye shall behold him. And they'll run and they'll hide, amen. But at the rapture, it's going to be secret and selective for all those who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only will it be sudden, not only will it be selective, but it's going to be very serious. You know, the world has changed. You may have noticed. The world has changed. But can you imagine the change that's going to happen after the believers leave this world? You know, in 2 Thessalonians, the, the Christians there, they were, they were worried. They'd been told by false prophets, and there's many of them out there with dreams and, and notions and all the rest of it. And they told them, wait a minute, you've missed the rapture. And Paul reassured them, said, no, 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 you've not missed the rapture because look around you. The, the believers are still here. The, the Holy Spirit is still here. The man of sin hasn't been revealed. All that has to happen after the rapture, amen. And since that hasn't happened, you know that it hasn't happened. But it does say that when he, the Holy Spirit, who indwells us, the believers, is taken out of this world, then the man of sin will be revealed. And that's going to be a terrible time for this world. The man of sin, the Antichrist, will have all the answers, but he'll still be a wicked, evil person who will turn this world against God, and it'll be a terrible thing. It'll be a sad time, amen. It's very sad, the tribulation. Many people will die. Many people will be judged by God. And I say, if you're not saved today, Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Today believe in Him. Bear to believe today, amen. Enoch walked with God. Enoch served God. He walked with Him every day. He had fellowship with Him. It wasn't something that he did on Sundays. It wasn't something he did a couple of times a week. He walked with God. It was a life that demonstrated his faith that was in his heart. It wasn't the walking that saved Enoch. It was the faith that he had that saved Enoch. And the Bible tells us that he had a testimony. Amen. He had a testimony that he pleased God. You know, it's a good thing to have a testimony. A testimony is just telling what happened to you. And during this time, I believe this is an excellent time to build up our testimonies. To get closer to the Lord. To read our Bibles more, amen, and more regularly. To get through the Bible. I was talking to, to one believer just the, uh, a few days ago. And he was telling me that he's read the whole Old Testament now. And he's looking forward to getting into the, the New Testament and reading all of that. Would it be a great thing to read the entire Bible during this time? That would be a great testimony, man. Would it be a great testimony for your family to tell people, you know, they've told me about Jesus now. I now understand and know what they believe. That would be a great testimony, man. We have to have a good testimony. We have to have a testimony that pleases God. That's what Enoch had. And he was not. He was gone. Before the wrath fell, Enoch left. And before the wrath comes in the tribulation, the church will leave all those who believe. We are not in the tribulation, folks. We are definitely, categorically, not in the tribulation. And the church will not be in the tribulation, according to the Bible, the Word of God. And if you think that we're going through a tribulation, you do not know your Bible well at all. You do not understand the Bible at all. Uh, it's very clear the Bible says that the church will not go through the tribulation. The tribulation period is, is Daniel's 70th week and has mostly to do with the nation of Israel and the saints who are saved during the tribulation. The church is not in the tribulation. Actually, if you read the, the, the book of Revelation, you find at the end of the tribulation that the church is already in heaven. The church is in heaven, not going through the tribulation. So Enoch walked with God and he was not. But not only that, Enoch had a great testimony, man. We find out about Noah. And I, I, you know, one of my favorite characters in the Bible is Noah. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, it says this, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, Moves with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by 
faith became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Enoch. By faith, Abel. By faith, Noah. Now, in Genesis chapter 6, we find it says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. How did he find grace? Not by building a boat, because he did that afterwards. The building of the ark was a consequence of his faith, not the cause of his faith. His belief in God, he found grace. And here in our chapter, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, it says, by faith, Noah. And he became heirs of the righteousness, which is by faith. Not by faith and works, but by faith. So e Enoch walked with God, Abel walked with God. And not only that, we find out that Noah walked with God. Amen. Amen. Noah walked with God. First uh, Thessalonians um, tells us about faith and tells about our waiting. Amen. And Noah walked with God and he did it in terrible times. You read Genesis chapter 6 and the things that God says about the people there. The thoughts of the hearts of men, the sons of men was evil continually. That speaks of this generation. Amen. There's so many evil thoughts and things going on in this world. When Noah walked with God, he did it during a terrible time. He, he raised his family during a time of extreme wickedness, during a time of violence, during a time there was no law, during a time when God and his word and his ways was being ignored. One of the sad things to me, to, to me today is you see so very few people in the midst of this turning to God. Searching the Bible, the Word of God. They just seem to be looking for a vaccine that I don't think will ever come rather than getting into the Word of God. You know, the cure for sin is the Word of God, is the blood of Christ and being saved, amen. He raised his family. And not only that, God told him there's going to be a judgment time. So God told him this and he began to build an ark. He told him it's going to rain. Something had not happened at that time. But it did rain and God kept his word. And you know what? God's going to keep his word today. Amen. Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 3, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am there, you may be also. That was a promise given to the church. Amen. That was a promise given to you and I. He's coming back. He's going to take us out of this world before the judgment of the tribulation. And he's going to take us to that place. We're going to have the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven. And then we're going to return at the end of the tribulation with the Lord to rule and reign. Amen. Noah walked with God. You know, it says that he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I'm reminded of that verse in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, there's not going to be anybody in heaven from any dispensation at any time who's going to walk around heaven boasting, well, you know, I, I deserve to be here. I'm here because of what I did and God saw what I did and, and he said that was acceptable. Nobody is going to be in heaven boasting of what they did. The only thing that's going to get you into heaven is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone for salvation. And Noah found grace in the midst of a dark time, in the midst of a terrible time, Noah found grace. You know, I believe that God can find grace in our hearts, amen. And I believe that God can look in this world and find his people, a people who are, who are seeking him. God worked in Noah's life. God can work in our life, amen. And God demonstrated that faith by, his, by the walk of Noah as he walked with God twice. We're told that Noah walked with God, that he was perfect. It means that he was upright. He eschewed evil. Amen. We should do that. Amen. Noah walked with God. It was a consistent walk. It wasn't a walk of, well, you know, I'll, I'll do that for a little while. I'll do it on Sunday. He walked with God. You see, if you're going to walk with God, you need faith. Amen. You can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it in your own merits. You can't do it because you've bought a book or you've read a DVD or you watch a YouTube video. You need faith. Now you might say, I don't have a lot of faith. Good news is you don't need a lot of faith. 
First of all, you need faith as a, as a grain of mustard seed. And then you need to have faith in the Lord. Nahum 1.7 says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. We sing that song, don't we, in our church, Trust and Obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. You have got to trust him, amen. You've got to know that he is watching over for us. He's allowing everything to happen in his time for his purpose. And he is preparing you and I to leave this world. We need to get ready, amen. You know, in the, in the days gone by when we used to go on holidays and things like that, you would get yourself ready, you'd get your suitcase, you'd make sure you got your passport, make sure you got your phone and your charge and all the rest of it. You'd get excited about the trip you're getting ready to take, amen. Are you getting ready? Are you excited about the Lord coming back, amen? You know, I'm looking forward to the rapture, amen. I'm not looking forward to the Antichrist because the believers won't see the Antichrist. I'm not looking to not take the mark because believers will not take the mark because you and I who are saved won't be in the tribulation. But we have to get excited and draw closer to God. The Bible tells us, be, tells us, be ye holy for I am holy, amen. And so I believe we need to be holy. What can we learn about faith? You can trust the Lord. You can walk with the Lord. It will be worth it all, amen, to see Jesus and to trust him. I don't know what situation or your circumstances right now, but I know that God knows, amen. And I know no matter what comes your way or what comes my way, we can handle it through faith. Faith in Christ. Do you have that faith? Have you been saved, amen? Do you trust, have you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior? I'm not asking you if you've been to church. I'm not asking if you're a member of any church, if you've been baptized or any of these things. I'm asking, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Do you know him this morning? If you don't, I would ask you now to, to, to seek him and believe in him today and he will save you, amen. You can be saved today. The Bible says, behold, now is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. You can be saved today. You know, as we read through uh, Hebrews chapter 11, we'll see great studies, great character, characters who, who did amazing things by faith. And you know, God hasn't changed. And you know, one of the things that, that I rejoice about, God has no favorites, amen. It's not that brother or sister so-and-so, that God loves them more, so God honors their faith more. God honors all faith in him by even this, the, the, this, the weakest believer. It's not how much faith you, ha your faith you have, but who you have your faith in. Enoch walked with God. Abel pleased God. Noah pleased God. Enoch was taken out of this world because he pleased God. Time is short, amen. I'm looking forward to the Lord coming back very soon. And I hope you are too, amen. I hope you're getting ready. I hope you're preparing for what God can do in your life. He says he's coming back, amen. I trust him, amen. I know he's going to come back and he's going to take his people out of this world. So be prepared, amen. Get ready. The Lord will come back soon. And it says in the last chapter of the book of Revelation, the spirit and the bride say come and let whosoever will come and take of the water of life. Amen. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for thy word. We thank you, Lord, the study of faith that we can learn what you did in the past to these, these men of God. Help us, Lord, to be men and women of God who will act on faith and demonstrate faith in this difficult time, showing that you can be trusted and the Lord, we can pl place our faith and trust in you. Bless us, Lord. Meet the needs. Speak to our hearts. Help us to draw closer to you. And for what you do in our lives, we'll give thee the thanks and praise. We ask it, Lord. Ask your blessings upon our church and upon our people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Look forward to meeting you again soon. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Amen.